Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you how I put together this fern demo that I showed earlier. And this one consists of two compounds that are important. Uh, first one being a strand on strand compound where we can grow strands um, away from our input strand. Um, so we can make feathers and ferns and stuff like that. And the second one is going to be a roll. And then combining the two with an input field, which is just a plane uh, in that demo, but you can also use um, the field manipulators that uh, Ola Dreyer um, put together for us to make that kind of animation. Okay. So let's start with uh, the roll, maybe. So I have a single curve and resampled that curve. So we have lots of points to make a smooth roll. These are the axes, which are pretty important. So we always will have to um, look out for uh, an orientation value um, or property, uh, normal, binormal, and tangents. We're going to need them pretty often. And the strand ratio as well. Um, the ratio is just a float value that will output um, numbers from 0 to 1, from root to tip of each strand. And we can actually calculate that by using the update strand ratio node, which is not accessible anymore. It's just an internal compound, but we can find it in the set strand size profile. Uh, somewhere in here, there is a checkpoint ratio. You can use this one or dive deeper and take the update strand ratio from here, which will calculate the length of the spline or the strand and put out values from 0 to 1. And then we feed that into my new compound, which is the roll strands. And with roll, we can control a fraction from 0 to 1. Let's roll it up like that. We can change the degrees and we can change the ratio. Now the ratio on this one is um, something different. It is um, if the ratio is low, like 0.1, you can see that the whole strand is bending from root to tip. And if we increase it uh, to a value like 10, then it's a completely different roll. It's going to roll pretty close to the original strand. And the first portion of the strand is um, just completely unaffected. And the last one is just the property, um, where we can decide over which axes we would like to rotate. So right now we are using the normal, point normal, which is the green axis, rotating around this one. But we could also use the binormal, which is the red one, to roll on that axis. Okay, so that's the roll. And the second thing that we need is growing strands from other strands. Um, I did the same setup basically. I have an input spline, resampled the spline, gave it some orientation and a ratio. And then I have this little neat compound called strand on strands. Um, I also have a property where I can put in on which axis I'd like to grow the new strands. So normal or binormal. Adjust the number of strands along the ratio, the segments of the strands. We can activate or deactivate the mirror, flip it on the other side, adjust the length and give it some variety with an offset. Um, then we can give it a shape with a curve node. So we can adjust how this looks like. 
on the profile. And there is some extra rotation. It's a rotation around the tangent of the original spline. So you can do things like this and give it some variety as well. And we can rotate around the binormal, which is the other axes. Uh, maybe like that. Also with some randomness. And then we almost have a feather. <laughs> Just like that. Okay. And if we have that in place and the roll, we can combine the two. So if we uh, have multiple strands scattered, uh, this one's on a plane, but you can also scatter it anywhere you like. Um, animate it, curl it, twist it, rotate it, do whatever you like. And then uh, use fields to drive the um, fraction value that goes from 0 to 1. And the fields are going to output also values from 0 to 1. So if I animate the field, we can see that everything is curling within the field. And I hooked that up both to the role on the main strands as well as the role on the secondary strands. Yeah, so let's dive in our first compound. Okay, so let's start off with a new graph and give ourselves a little bit um, something to play with. So we can create a mesh plane and create strands along its normals. Uh, make it a little bit bigger maybe and less tessellation. Longer strands, that's fine. And we're definitely going to need orientations. I'm using the update strands orientations from Maxine because it has some more options when it comes to um, the algorithm for the framing. But yeah, there's our orientation. And then we can introduce some variety so we can test that our compound that is computing our math on every strand is really working. So maybe um, we can randomize the vector with the randomized vector and cone from the rebel pack. I'm getting the point normal of the plane. And randomizing that vector a few degrees. No animation though. Set point normal again. Yeah, so that's okay. Then let's um, maybe rotate them. Another Maxime node. Um, use random rotation, mm, maybe no twist for now, that's fine. And uh, we could vary the length as well. So, um, what's it called? Size? No. Oh. Resize strand. Um, let's get a scope out so we can see what we're doing. As you can see here, the points are kind of pushed um, together when they 
a short one, so I'm going to take off the preserved positions. So it's a linear distribution along the length of the spline. That's what we want. Great, so that's that. And maybe resample. Or maybe we should do that beforehand. Yeah, I'm just going to trim the strands here. sample in between. So now our strands have different point counts along the length. That's nice. Okay. I'm going to save it. And now we're going to make ourselves um, a more general purpose compound to work with strands. Um, I've called it for each strand, uh, where we just dissect the structure of the strand and compute whatever we want on the points for each strand. Um, so make a compound. Uh, each strand. And in here, we're going to get the structure. And this is going to split up um, this strand into its basic components. So we have the number of strands here and the strand offset array uh, that tells the strand where it's going to cut. And we're going to loop through this. So for each uh, for each strand, now we can connect the strand count with the max iterations, uh, and give it the strand offset array and the strand itself. And in here, we're going to access the offset array. So the current index is the strand we're looking at. Give it the array, and then. This is the start and the end of the offset array. So it would be this point and that point. And then we can um, slice any information out of our strands that we like. So just hook up start and end to the slice array. And we could get a point position, for instance. So this is the point positions of all our strands. And once we slice that, with the offset array information, then this portion is only going to be the points from one of the strands in each iteration. So this is kind of the basic general purpose uh, compound that I saved myself. So I can make it editable and dive in, do whatever I need. Um, and this would be uh, the portion where you introduce your math. Okay, so um, what do we need to make them roll? What we want to do is have a look at each point and rotate that point around the previous point axes. Um, so either the normal axes or the binormal axes. Um, and to accomplish that, one thing that we definitely need is the previous index. So that's index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're looking at points with the index of 4. We're going to need the normal and the binormal from the index 3. And yeah, so let's get all the information that we need and then see how I compute it. So I'm getting, um, I could get. Uh, the normal straight away uh, with the get point normal or 
um, get point binormal and then use that axis but I would like to have it uh, more flexible so we're going to uh, get geo property come on get geo property it's definitely a flow tree but the property is something that we might want to change so let's take the point normal for now and then slice it up just like we did with the positions so now that's only the normals of that particular piece of strand uh, let's call it uh, axis because we don't know if that's a normal or the binormal it's just the axis and that's the positions and then what we can also get is the uh, ratio we're going to need a ratio a float value basically that's uh, going from 0 to 1 um, for each strand and this is something that we don't have yet yeah so I'm going to update strand ratio and remember this is the node that I grabbed off of uh, the other one um, because that's an internal node that's not exposed to the user interface but yeah once we have the ratio in our data stream we can get it get point ratio slice that up and then we're going to make ourselves the index array that we need of the previous points basically so how do we do it um, we can create a new sequence array and we need integer type um, so the size of the array is going to be exactly uh, the size of the other sliced up arrays um, here's the length we can hook that up straight away so we're getting the exact number of points that we need we're going to start at zero and make a step of one so now this would be a sequence from zero one two three and so on but since we're going to need the previous index we're just gonna decrement it by one So the value that we have here is one less and then we need to account for um, the first point because originally we started at zero and this is going to make it minus one which is not a valid index so uh, we'll make a new statement um, and see whether uh, one of the incoming indices is zero and if it is then we're gonna output zero and otherwise we're just gonna take the decremented array and all of that is the previous index Let's save it Okay, so now what do we need to do? We need to um, change the orientation of all our points to be able to roll or to um, rotate the points around these newly created rotations. I'm going to make a new compound here called set orientation. And I'm going to input our previous index array, the axes.
Um, that's it for now. Gonna need something else later on, but um, here we can get from array. So now we're having all the previous axes of the points. And we're going to use that axis and an angle that we want to define to create our new um, orientations, which is expressed as a quaternion. Uh, it's a math float for. So there's the axis value, and then there's um, the computed uh, radians. Since everyone likes to work in degrees, we're going to convert it and output those degrees um, to the top level of our compound. Degrees. So yeah. Great. Let's uh, put in a value for now and see what it does. Um, it's not hooked up yet. Uh, and we could build ourselves an intermediate um, scope. So we're going to construct points here, uh, get the positions of the one strand that we're looking at, and set orientations. Get those uh, new rotations and take the point transform scope right here. I'm going to deactivate the other scope and activate this one. Um, so, yeah, if we go on the top level of our compound and change the degrees. You can see that we're rotating, rotating around an axis here. So that's the original orientation and then we're going to rotate it. Great. So that's working. Um, but since not everything is supposed to rotate uh, at one time, we can multiply that rotation um, so that the first point doesn't have any new orientations and the last point will have the full uh, 10 degrees. And we can just multiply that by the uh, ratio, because that's the value that goes from 0 to 1. Um, and we're simply multiplying that with our degrees. So get the ratio ratio slice that we have into our new compound. I call it strand ratio maybe. And then multiply it. And so now that's exactly what we need. No rotation in the beginning, full rotation at the at the tip. Okay, cool. So now that we have set the new orientations, and remember it's just the orientations, uh, it's not the points being rotated, that puts uh, what comes next. So Orientation. Okay, the next compound is going to be an iterator. And we want to get the previous index array. And this is what we're iterating over, so that's the uh, iteration target. Uh, we need the points and we need the orientations. Uh, point position and orientation. And then inside of um, this iteration, 
what you want to do is rotate each point around the newly created orientations of the previous point. So that's going to require us to save the port state. Uh, so the new position and the new orientation of each point and loop back back uh, for the next iteration. So for the first point, we don't have any previous um, previous points. So we're just simply going to create something. Um, for the position, we're going to get the first point in the array. Uh, point um, position. And for the orientation, we're just going to create uh, an um, a rotation value or orientation value that does nothing. So create a value node and make that a vector 4 for quaternion. And the quaternion that doesn't rotate at all is 0, 0, 0, 1. Point orient. And these are going to be our port states. So we can hook that up and define that straight away. Okay. So let's get the scope on. What we're doing now is. Um, we want to rotate this point around that point's orientation and therefore uh, we would have to compute um, the difference between the two vectors so we're operating in local space and we can do that by uh, get from array and we're getting the point position of the current points that's the position and we're getting the position of the previous point. And if we subtract it, we're getting the local space. And then we're going to rotate that local space point by a quaternion. And once we rotated it, we're going to compute it backwards um, to world space again. So we're adding the result to the, um, the previous point position that was saved in the previous iteration. Right? And that's going to be the new point position for the next iteration. And this is also going to be the iteration target and the new point positions that we're putting out of this compound. So alt positions. Okay, for the orientation, we're getting the orientation of the previous index. And then um, to rotate an orientation around another orientation, um, we'd have to. We cannot use the rotate by quaternion because that's only going to rotate a vector. As you can see here, it's just um, three floats, but a quaternion consists of four. So, how do we do it? Uh, we're going to use multiply quaternion start because that's exactly what it's doing. So we're rotating the orientation around the previous rotation. Rotate our vector around S and save the new orientation for the next iteration. And this is not commutative, so we have to be uh, aware of the input order. I'm not sure if that's right. We're going to have a look at it and check it out. So this is the new point positions, and we're going to output them. And on the top level, 
on our on the each strand loop that we're having, we're getting um, a two-dimensional array. And that's because we're getting all the new point positions of all the individual strands. Uh, we just simply have to flatten the nested array. So it writes all the information into one array. You can see it here. It's a two-dimensional array. And here it's one-dimensional. And then we can set the point positions on, on our strands. And hopefully, this is going to yield the result that we want. So, yeah, getting some rotations. Give ourselves a little bit more points to play with. It's working already. Great. So let's check if we can switch the axes by just using the binormal. And yeah, that does work. Awesome. So that was the hard part. Call it roll strands demo. Can we save it? And now to get more control we can hook up some other things. Um, because the way I thought about it is this. I would like to have an animation property that's normalized. So something that's from 0 to 1 um, to determine if that strand is rolled up completely or not. So I can hook up anything I like. I could um, animate it by hand, every, all the strands simultaneously by animating from 0 to 1. Or I could hook up um, a field and sample um, the starting, uh, sample the field at the starting point of each strand to get a value in world space, which is 0 to 1, um, or any other way you like. So let's introduce a fraction. And the way to do this is um, to have a look at the um, orientations again. So the set orientation compound. Um, maybe reduce the numbers, number of points. It's more obvious what's happening. Um, so in here, we have a quaternion, right? So that's the orientation that we uh, that we're seeing here. And what we can do is um, lerp it. Use the quaternion uh, lerp, and we could blend from a orientation that's doing nothing, remember that's 0, 0, 0, 1, to our newly um, calculated rotation. And the fraction is uh, what we can use. Sorry, let's hook it up. The fraction is what we can use to uh, control it. And this one will have to be hooked up with our um, strand ratio as well. So like this, maybe. And let's multiply that value by something that is going to be output as our fraction control.
So now we have a fraction that we can use to blend the orientations. And now we have to come up with some, some kind of value range Kung Fu that we do uh, to keep the value in check, basically. Um, so the way I did it was uh, through experimentation, basically. Um, There's nothing that I um, thought about from the beginning. I uh, just had that fraction value, the strand orientation um, ratio, and tried to um, compute it in any way uh, that would look and feel good during animation. So this is how I did it. Um, let's get rid of the multiply for now. So I rearranged the values, change range on the fraction, and I wanted to be animatable from 0 to 1. And then I took uh, the ratio and rearranged it. Uh, the original range is from 0 to 1, and I wanted to um, kind of range, put it into another range. And therefore, I uh, created a another control. Um, I called it ratio, um, but we could also call this uh, scale. So I can call it scale, and I'm hooking this up to the end of the fraction, so it's going from zero to whatever scale we put in, and we're going to negate the scale and put that into the start end um, to start and end portion. So it's starting from negative scale to zero, and then simply adding that up. Um, to form our fraction. And I think I uh, put in a um, multiply of two, so twice of the scale for the fraction. And yeah, let's just hook this up and see what it's doing. So with a scale of one, okay, this is also rotating in the wrong direction, I think I know where that is, and with the greater scale, oh yeah, that's fine, okay cool. So something else I did was I interpolated the ratio differently um, to create our orientations. Right now the ratio is linear, so it's a linear curve, it's uh, values from 0 to 1, um, but we can also change the slope of it. You can either hook up a f-curve to control it, or you can just use um, an exponential maybe. So this is making uh, the value range from 0 to 1 to something different. Uh, it's a more steep curve. It's going from 1 to 2.7 whatever. And then for the quaternion lerp, um, since everything we did here with our uh, fraction control will create crazy values uh, sometimes, and um, we'd have to clamp it. So clamp negative and positive values that are going below zero or above one. And that should do the trick. So now let's uh, give ourselves more points and see if everything is working. 
So we'll maybe just rotate 20 degrees with a scale of 1. We're getting that. And then if we increase it to 10, yeah, it is the desired effect. Yes, great. So that's that. Um, that's basically everything we need for this compound to work. Um, but I found something else to be relevant when it comes to um, creating more strands uh, on another strand and then rolling them as well. Because right now we are using the orientation values to rotate the points. And the rotation values are fine, but um, the normal, tangent, and binormal are not affected um, at all. So we'd have to recalculate them um, after our compound has done all the math to roll up the strand to get the correct tangents and so on. So let's dive into our compound again and maybe um, the point positions we should maybe call positions. And we can also output the orientations that we calculate. So all of that can be iteration target called orient. And on the top level, you'd have to flatten that array as well. And then we can use it to recalculate our, um, our normals, our tangents, and binormals, and finally the uh, new orientation. And I found a handy little node um, hidden inside of one of the Bifrost nodes. Mm, it's in the rotate points. If you open that up, there is a compound. It's taken in a quaternion and updating the normal tangent and binormal. So this is what I'm using. I'm putting in our quaternion orientations and updating the normal tangent and binormal at this stage. And now that we have uh, those three properties set for us, um, we can form a new orientation. So I'm using normal and tangent to orientation. Uh, get point normal, get point tangent. Set point orientation. And this should be it really. So if we have a look at the orientations after we rotated everything, it should look fine. Yeah. I'm going to show you the difference. So now we can see that uh, the blue tangent is kind of um, rolling along with our points. And if we don't do it, our orientations would stay the same. So it's essential for anything that goes beyond our compound to have the correct orientations. And I think the um, point transform scope, so I'm going to show orients. I'm not sure. I think it does. Yeah. Um, but you can also go ahead and make a normal um, 
point scope and check the individual axes. So we make a terminal so we can see the points and then we're going to show a vector, a point um, a normal for instance, right? And the point tangent. Now we are seeing that this is propagated the way we like. So that's it for um, for the strand roll. Uh, we could clean up, get rid of the point construct here. I'm gonna need that again. And yeah, that's it. That's the roll strands compound. Let's save it and have a look at the strands on strands compound. Right, so the next compound is going to be in a strands on strands compound. And we can use the same setup, just disconnect the role for now. And I'm going to use my saved for each strand compound, make that editable. And that's basically the same setup that we did before. So it's getting the strand structure, looping through all the strands, and then accessing the array and slicing it. But we're actually not going to use the slice array, because what we want to do is this. Um, we are going to create new points along each strand and at each point we want to get values off of our original strand. So we would like to get values like the point position, values like the normal, binormal, tangent, ratio, whatever we need and propagate that back onto our newly created strands. And I am using the Rebel pack node get from interpolated array. So let's get the point positions, put that into the array, and then we need to set the node to be working on the slice. And then we can hook up the start and end points or indices of each strand and normalize the index. And then we're going to create an index array. And this is going to determine how many points we want to create. Um, and we can use Maxime's fill interpolated array. So the first value is 0. The second value is going to be 1, because that's the ratio from 0 to 1, um, where we're going to sample the array. And the size is the number of strands that we're going to create, uh, basically. So we can make that an input straight away and call that um, number of strands. That's the float index. And then we're going to construct a point object. Let's get the positions in, uh, get the points out. This is not going to happen. This is out points for now. These are not strands anymore. They are my points. Hard to see, maybe. Uh, Let's get a scope. Okay. Um, and then from these points, we would like to create strands along normals. Since we don't have normals yet, we just still need to sample them from the original strands. Maybe I'm going to show the original strands as well. So 
makes a little bit more sense. Um, yeah, so that is um, positions, and we can also um, get point normal from the original strand. And then we're going to set the point normals on the newly created point object. And now um, yeah, maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> uh, now we can create our new strands straight away in here. So create strands along normals. In goes our point object with normal information, and out goes um, our strands. So that's not points, that's strands. Here they are. And if we take the number of strands property, put that on the top level, we can already adjust how many we are creating. But that's good. And now we can go on and take all the other information that we like to pull from the original strand, like um, the tangent and the binormal and everything else, so we can um, vary all of our newly created strands in a meaningful way. So let's get rid of this. I'm going to get point tangents get point binormal, um, get point orientation, get point ratio, look everything up, interpolate everything. orientation and ratio and then set it on our uh, point geo set point tangents Set point binormal. Set point orientation. And set point ratio. And now that's going to go into our own. Uh, create strands along normals node. Make that a compound and call it so uh, construct point object. Save it. And then let's think about what we're gonna do next. So um, first of all, we could now, since we have orientations, uh, mirror all of these axes onto the other side. So we can um, have a switch to mirror the, uh, the created uh, strands. So how do we do it? Uh, make a compound, call that mirror. And in here, we are going to have the 
incoming points and then we need to duplicate the points, rotate them around and add them back together to get a double the amount with uh, axes pointing to the other direction. So I'm using an if statement and that's going to be uh, the mirror switch basically. So it's not mirrored then we can just keep the original points and forward them and otherwise we'd have to build an array and merge it and the array is going to be twice uh, of our points and the second uh, point object is going to have different um, normals, tangents, binormals and orientations. So getting point normal, get point tangent, get point binormal. Put that up and then negate them. can set point normal again set point tangents set point binormal and then um, I'm going to create a new orientation with the normal and tangent that I negated. Let's set point orientation. So now all the other points are flipped. And if we actually activate it, we're getting The other portion of our strands. Cool. So what's next? Some variety would be great. So um, let's have a look at the uh, orientations of the point object. Yeah, so since this is um, creating new strands along the normal, along the green axes, we could actually rotate this whole thing um, around the tangent and around the binormal to give it some more variety. Okay, so making a compound, a random rotation, and I think we can use the rotate points now, because this one will actually rotate everything, uh, including the orientation and uh, the normal tangent and all the other properties as well. So we can rotate these points. Now we have to decide which axis and we're going to get, get um, point tangent for now. See what that does. And then give it some angle, degree to radians, and set the parameter here. Um, yeah, like that. And this is already doing something. Yeah. It's rotating around the tangents. Great. 
and then we can copy this and use the binormal instead of the tangent. To make the second rotation, which is this up and down. Okay, so we have up and down and around the original tangent. That's not quite right, like this. Okay, cool. And then we can also duplicate that again and use the weight input oops, to um, vary the whole thing. So, okay, let's have some space. That's the tangent rotation. Um, let's duplicate that again. Yeah. So the tangent rotation, and that's tangent uh, rand. And how do we create the random weights? I say we make a random value array. This size is going to be a point count. Let's check it out. Yeah, it gives us some variety, but it's only varying into one direction, basically. And to spread that out into the other direction, we can make an offset in the random array. I think minus 0.5 will do the trick. Yeah, cool. So let's do the same thing for the binormal. So that's binormal rotation duplicated. Use the same axes. Chain that up and Maybe we can use another seed for this one. Does it work? Yes. All right, so that's cool. Let's create the inputs. So that is tangent rotation tangent rotation and that's tangent random that's binormal rotation Binormal random. There's also 
all the information on the create strand along normal that we can output. So uh, the segments of the newly created strands, the length, that's something we're going to need as well. And maybe put that up top. Put that in a meaningful order. So number of strands and segments, uh, the length might be of importance. Okay, cool. So that's that. Save it. Now we can also vary the length. So I'm going to use um, two of Maxime's nodes the resize strands to get some variation in the length. Um, randomize. And we take in the min length and max length randomization properties. So we can use that later on on our compound. And in between we're going to create the F-curve to um, give us the control over the shape of the profile. And that's going to need um, scale strands compound. And for the weight, we're going to use the ratio from 0 to 1 and then pipe that through an F-curve. The point ratio from the point object that we created. Remember that we interpolated the ratio here, so um, the information is on our point object. So that's the ratio. Get an F-curve. that into scale weight and we can also put these out okay so yeah the order it's annoying. Here we go. So uh, we have a total length. Let's get rid of the variation for now. And then we have an F-curve that we can use to shape the profile. So we have a value of zero. Introduce another point in the middle. And then just play around with it to give ourselves a nice little shape. So the length is still usable. And minimum randomization is going to cut them short. The max is going to extend them. That's interesting. What else can we do? Save it. So I think for our functionality, that's about it. We just have to do some more housekeeping again. Um, because there is a problem that arises when creating strands along normals. Uh, right here in our data stream, we still have all the information that we propagated from our input strands. Uh, but once we create the new object, this is all gone, basically. So the new strands don't have normals, tangents, binormal information, or orientations and we'd have to recreate them 
And then there's a question whether you'd like to recalculate them um, using this update orientations node or um, inherit them from the originals um, from the original strands. And I think uh, having all those properties uh, and just passing them on is uh, might be faster and um, more clean for that matter. So I'm going to show you how to inherit all those properties. And you can also inherit things like color, etc. I don't think I'm going to implement that here, but um, just follow the recipe and you will you'll be able to inherit the colors as well. So we will have to step through all the strands again. So make a for each strand compound again. Call it inherit. And then we're going to uh, get normals, and get tangents, and get binormal. I'm not going to worry about the orientation since um, we can recalculate it with uh, the information we have here. So from our original point object, we're going to forward the information. Pipe that right into our for each loop. So right now, we have one normal, one tangent, and one binormal information um, for each strand. It's the one that was sampled uh, on the original strand. So for this one, we have that normal tangent and binormal information. And we need to propagate that to all the points. So we can uh, get from array. normals at the index and then create a sequence array of the same value um, and replicate that how many times uh, we need for each strand. That's the length, right? So if that strand has, for instance, uh, 20 points, then the normal information is going to be created 20 times and put into an array. And we do the same for the other two. Tangents. That's out normal. Oh, tangent. And out by normal. I'm not going to need this. Now everything that comes out of the for each strand loop is a two-dimensional array, so we have to flatten the nested, flatten nested array, and then set point normal on the newly created strands. Do the same for the tangent and 
for the binomial. So tangents is a binomial. And then recreate the orientation. That's normals and tangents to orient set point orientation. And then let's check if that works out for us. Wow. Okay, so we are having the same orientation on all our points. And one more thing, maybe the output is an array of strands, or an array of amino objects. We might want to merge them. And that's Strands on strands. Demo. Before we continue, there is one more property that we can um, control in our compound, which I forgot to output, which is we create strands along normal, normal property. Just like we did with the row, um, we can uh, vary the property as well. So instead of using the normal, we could also use binormal. So right now, we create a new strands, secondary strands along the normal. But if you change the property to binormal, it's going to flip 90 degrees. Okay, so now let's see if we can hook everything up. So the original strand is going to get bent. So let's roll it. Yes, nice. And then once that is rolled, we can maybe roll the other ones as well. So Might be a matter of finding the right um, property to roll over. Since we copied the original orientation and the other strands are um, 90 degrees off, we might also need to use the tangent, point tangent. Yeah, that's the right axis. Uh, maybe use a negative angle and give it a little bit more segments. Yes, so now we can roll the main strand and we can roll secondary strands. Great, cool. So that's that. There's one more thing to do and that is uh, hooking up um, a field to our fraction and we 
have to do something with our fraction to get that going. All right, so the fraction value on our roll strands compound um, can be used in different ways. Uh, one way would be to just animate um, this value by hand. Uh, so it's just a single float value that is used in our compound to drive everything simultaneously. But we might also want to be inputting a complete array of values, something between 0 and 1, that is different for each strand. So in our compounds, um, well, first of all, make sure that your fraction value is of port type auto and the value type is float. And that's going to go in here. Where is it? There it is. And then we have to think about what's coming in. So we're going to differentiate between this being a single float value and this being a complete array for each uh, strand. So how do we do this? Um, we can check if it's an array. Uh, any is an array. And any is the type that we have to uh, cast this into. So um, to type any. And if that's the case, then we're just going to take the array when it comes in and put it into true case. And if it's just a single value, then we'd have to build an array. So we can make a sequence array. Remember, this should be the one float value, a value that we're animating. And we're not going to step um, any further. I'm just going to replicate this as many times as we have strands. So in here, the max iterations uh, is actually the strand count. So we can use it. And now we have an array with the same float value for each strand. And we can put that into a false case. But since these two are different um, different value types, uh, I don't think this is going to work. It's going to give us an error. So um, what we can do is uh, build an array, an empty one, and put the incoming array in here and follow this. And this should make this whole construct work. Okay, um, so now the output here is going to be an array of single float value for all the um, strands, just one. And what we need to do to drive our fraction here is to replicate that value as many times as we have uh, points on our strands. So we can um, get from array the current index. So that's just the one value that's associated with um, the strand that we're looking at in our loop. And then we're going to make another sequence and replicate that value for all the points in our current strand. The length of the strand is in the excess offset array. So now we have the same value propagated to all the points. We're going to use that as a fraction. 
and let's just put that on to a compound and call that fraction or strand. Okay, so what does it do? Uh, first of all, let's replace. Oh, let's check it out. Let's see if it works. We're not going to roll the secondary strands for now. Just leave them be. Um, okay. And here we're going to hook up a field. So the single value is still working. Great. And now we can create a field. You can either create a field yourself, um, however you like, or you can um, create a manipulator field from Roland Dreyer. It's a great. So here's the field, which is creating the values from 0 to 1 in world space. And I want to sample this field at the start position of each strand. So get strand start points, which will give us the position. Sample the field at this point and take the float values and put that into our fraction. Oh. So what's happening here? Okay, so that's a mismatch. We are having a two-dimensional array coming in from this node, I think. Yeah, okay. So if it's just a single float value, then we're going to build an array, and that's just going to be an array with um, one entry. And then we can take the first value in the array and put that into our sequence. And this should cover the case where it's just a single float and it also works when there is an array incoming. Yeah. So now we can animate our fields and have everything react to it, which is great. Cool, so let's duplicate our um, New role strands compound. Hook this up. And we might need to get new start points. So those are the secondary strands. They have different starting points. We're going to sample the same field, put that into the fraction, and output them. It is the wrong property again. Tangent. And then it should work. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of tweaking the parameters to make everything look nice. But that's the rolling fern. Everything is rolled up and will unravel once you animate through. Yeah, and that's it basically. Now you can go ahead and you know animate all your strands before you're putting them into um, the roll compound and um, displace them so they look a little bit more interesting and not as straight as, as these guys. <laughs> and that's the fern animation demo. Have fun guys. <laughs>